stop shop for all of your furniture and mattress needs. Fifth and Main, downtown Stillwater. Check them out at stillwaterfurnitureshowcase.com. They're open Monday through Saturday, 930 to 6, even on Sundays, 1 to 5. You can come on in here. Right now they offer free design services, express delivery, financing is always available on everything you want. If you're looking for new furniture, you don't have to drive to Oklahoma City, Tulsa, or Wichita because Furniture Showcase has all the name brands and big selection right here in Stillwater. Come check them out at 5th and Main. Uh, Zach, welcome into another week. How, how was the weekend? It was peaceful. It was quiet. It's always a plus. It was quiet. It was nice. I found a Snickers in my backpack when I got here, so that was really cool. Uh, I think it's going to be a good couple hours. Saw that. I couldn't believe it wasn't melted. It was, well, I'm I kept it in my still backpack. shocked. Let them keep my backpack in the car. Doesn't matter. It's chocolate. Yeah, but chocolate melts in heat and everything. In I mean, heat. it just room temp. Nah. Chocolate can melt. Clearly not. I, I, that's what I'm saying. I'm shocked. Yeah, well, I'm absolutely shocked. Well, gas stations. You buy Snickers at a gas station. It's not an. Yeah, but cooler. the reason I'm thinking it's is because temp. it was in like a confined area. There was not a lot of ventilation for air. I mean, that, that's why I'm just I'm blown away by it. Okay. It was really good. I'm glad that it was good for yeah, you and it, it was wasn't nice. uh, melted. That's pretty pretty really shocking. Uh, I was at Bush Stadium yesterday in St. Louis, and it was the first pro sporting event I have seen. And in well over a year mm-hmm. since everything was shut down in sports and they didn't have fans. And it was different, as expected. Uh, you had 32% capacity there. And usually on a Sunday, even in April for St. Louis, that place would have been packed out, as we know. Especially this year with the new additions, including Nolan Arenado. Everybody wants to come out and see it and all that. So that was the first weird thing, to see a limited crowd. The second one was... And I knew the rules going in when I got there, okay? I knew the COVID rules and everything. I understood. I got it, whatever. You get down there, okay? We're sitting down in the right field bleachers. Mm -hmm. And every area has an attendant. But this year, the attendants aren't just the ones that come in and show you where your seats are. They're also mask police and COVID police in general. Makes sense. So they come down the aisle, okay, and let us know and let everybody know, hey, you got to have them up, all this stuff, whatever. I just kind of was like, whatever. No, you know. You're not going to come back down here. Uh, I'm sitting outside. There's literally zero reason to ever have one on outside. So I'm sitting there outside with it on or with it off. He comes back over, okay? I'm taking sips in between my my beer that Mm -hmm. I got. And he actually came back over to us and told a member of my family, so I'll say that, Mm -hmm. that in between sips of her drink, she had to have it on. You could take it off the drink, mm-hmm. but then you had to have it back on before you, when you were like swallowing your sip. It was I, I couldn't believe what I just heard. I was like, "Interesting." Are you kidding me? This guy, I mean, he was he was unbelievable with his rules. So he that's that, how he got that power. I mean, he he. That's why I said he got a little bit of power, he and man, power. he just he came in and he let everybody know. But other than that, everybody throughout the game, no one really cared. You kind of just sat there and did your thing. I will say this: maybe the best part about all this with sports is social distancing fans because you get your own little area at a time where you would usually be so packed in that you couldn't move. Sign me up. That was the best thing about it. Now, Sign me up. I miss, you know, when something good happens, high-fiving everybody and all that because that was part of it too. I, I, like I miss that. I don't like touching people. Yeah, I, I, that's the only time. That's You're, another great thing about the pandemic because you don't have to touch people anymore. You don't have to shake hands or hug or anything like that. If there's another good thing that comes out <laughs> of it, it will be that hopefully everyone is much more – Stay away from Yeah, me. just like – Cleansing, cleanliness is just like through the roof after this. You well, know? I, so. It reminded me um, a, about four or five months before the pandemic started, we went to a concert and we waited for the gates to open. Um, we were shoulder to shoulder, front to back. There was like a thousand people and you're like, you're like rubbing up, you're like touching skin, like your, your calves are rubbing up against each other. And I'm just like, kind of world were we living in <laughs> what would i ever do that yeah. i was so stupid i i remember man i mean good times were in, in some of the pits and concerts but yeah it's like uh it's at stadiums and stuff i'm i'm body, good all those body fluids mm-hmm. yeah everything just flying around great Warm. times right uh so yeah and other than that i mean the cardinals sucked it up so hopefully they they do better tonight but it was still still fun to go back to bush that was always fun uh we got a lot of good stuff to come up here get to in the show uh we're gonna take a look at some college basketball news uh, the Masters finishing over the weekend with an historic victory in that one. Then we'll get into some football later on, too. Uh, the first thing I wanted to look at today, though, Zach, was we saw, what was it, a couple weeks ago now, that Chris Beard has gone to Texas yeah. from Texas Tech. Uh, he was one of a few 
uh, movements in Big 12 basketball coaching. Now, when he got over there, uh, I remember we were doing a show, and, and we had posed the question, and, and Levi even posed it with us, of the, the whole idea of would anybody transfer from Texas to go follow Shaka Smart. Well, at that time, we didn't know quite yet about Chris Beard, and we I, I thought about that question now, too. Okay, does that mean people will follow him from Texas Tech? Now you get word that two former players are reportedly interested in heading over to Texas Tech and have entered the portal. Mac McClung has done the exact same thing. Now there hasn't been a lot of word that he's necessarily going over to Texas, and that's his first spot mm-hmm. because he also simultaneously uh, declared for the NBA draft, which, again, when you, when you don't sign an agent, it doesn't really mean anything other than you're just testing everything out like Avery Anderson is doing, for example. Uh, but Micah Peavy and Kyler Edwards both considering heading over to Austin to join Coach Beard over there. Um, and right now, with those two, and Mac McClung, like I said, you basically have a Texas Tech exodus going on right now. And I think Mark Adams is basically in for a full rebuild yeah. at this point. You're going to have to. Which is not what you would want to do, especially after Texas Tech. Like the year they had, right? It wasn't as good as some in the past, but they were still a, a formidable team at times, a tournament team, and Mac McClung usually gave you a chance to win. All that's gone. I think it's a rough patch for Mark Adams, but it brings up a really interesting idea and a, and a topic about the transfer portal. Yeah. Because we haven't really talked a ton about it on this show before, mm-hmm. but it is something that I think is gaining so much more attention right now. You know, after this basketball season has ended, you've seen even more names. There's like what I think it's all 1,300 At names least. right now in the portal yeah, for basketball. I mean, that's that's unbelievable. So, are you a fan at all of the transfer portal? Yeah. Okay. I, I am. I, I. But it's definitely a double-edged sword. I don't like it this year because of the free. You get one free year of transfer. The NCAA is allowing for basically free reign to to come and go as you please. Um, now I think them Texas Tech boys are gonna they're they're gonna be I, I think in like interconference is gonna be a little tricky, especially just going down the road to Texas. Um, but I think that in certain situations the transfer portal could be really good. Um, maybe not 1300. I think the NCAA is gonna have to you know there I, I understand that the 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 movement now is being made you know um, giving giving players a lot a lot of rights. And, and I, I, I think that's fair. You know, they're bringing in millions of dollars to universities. They're the ones on the court. They're the ones sacrificing, so they should have rights. Um, I don't think anybody and everybody should be allowed to just move freely in the conference. If, if you get on Twitter and you look at what Dick Vitale is having to say about it, he is just having a field mm-hmm. day. Yeah. Um, I think it's a good I – th- I think the transfer portal overall is good because there are some really bad situations. Um, you're not a right fit, your coach leaves, you get injured and you never, you know, you're, they, they lose faith in you, whatever, you know, we're going to, we're going to, we're going to leave. We're going to go on to a better situation. I like it, but I'm not a fan. I'm not a fan of the, the open door policy. Everyone can come and go as they please. That's, that's the double edge for me. Dick Vitale said over the, I think it was over the weekend, wasn't Mm -hmm. it? That it would ruin the game before it was all said and done. He said it would ruin the game of college basketball. Hurts coaches Mm -hmm. uh, does not like it. Needs to go back to where uh, you only get to play immediately if your coach leaves. Mm -hmm. And I think that's fair. Yeah, I I, I can understand that point. But do you agree with the whole idea that okay, it's going to ruin the game? Like, is is that taking it too far? I think if they so if they allow what's going on right now to continue, I think it could ruin the game. I think the transfer portal overall is good. I, I think it's a good thing for basketball. But I, if you're just going to allow anyone and everyone to leave and be able to be eligible immediately at the new school, then, well, you know what? I was sold a bill of goods as a senior in high school, and I came to this school, and I averaged four and a half points a game, and I played 12 minutes a game, and I was guaranteed a starting spot, and I feel like, and whether it's accurate or not, the player feels like they've busted their butt, they've done all that they can do, and they're still only playing 12 minutes a game. So you know what? There was another coach that was also selling, you know, feeding me a line, and I think I'm going to go I'm gonna go play for him because he wants me and this is that. And so I think that if you continue the, the – and I think it's just one year, you know, you can you could transfer for free and you can just, you know, start up fresh the next year and be eligible, then I think it's bad for the game. But I don't think that's the case. I, I, I do think it's like – what we like it's like major league baseball in review it's like the ncaa with charges like 
it's a it's a good thing until it's not. And right now it's starting to be a little like okay, well, it could it could if it creeps up close to two thousand, you're telling me that all two thousand or however many kids are going to find this like it, it's like football. All the kids that enter the transfer portal for football, they don't find a spot. They found out really really quick that man, maybe I had it pretty good at that school that was paying for literally everything and then giving me a monthly stipend. I wasn't playing, but I got everything paid for. And now I'm having to, like, I, I'm not playing football right now. So it's it's good. Um, but it, it if it continues down this path, it's bad for the game. Yeah, like, for instance, Mac McClung, it would be his third team in three seasons. Yeah, that's, see, I don't agree with that. And Certain situations are yeah. great. But when you're looking at something like that, like if McClung doesn't hear what he wants to hear from the NBA and he's like, well, you know, I, I really wanted to play for Chris Beard, and I don't really want to go to Texas. So I think I'm going to go find a new school. You're telling me three schools in three years, and you're going to start all three years? Like, that's not – you left Georgetown because you wanted a new a new fit. Like, that, it, you were great at Georgetown. It's not like you weren't playing at Georgetown. It's not like you weren't playing at Texas Tech. Now, I, I don't agree with that. I, I think there are some situations like, well, if you want to transfer out of Texas Tech, then you're going to have to set a year, and if you don't have eligibility, then – you better pull your name out of the transfer portal and go back to tech. I think that it's, you know, I don't have a, a huge problem, I guess, with, with interconference because if it's available there mm-hmm. and the transfer portal is actually available for you to enter, if you end up on a team in the other conference looking at you think it's best for you, then fine. I mean, I'm not going to complain too much. Yeah. I know people have a problem with that. It's not really a problem for me. I'm not a huge fan of the transfer portal in general, though. Mm-hmm. I'll say that. Uh, because yeah, I, well, you like six-hour baseball games, though. <laughs> it's true. It's true. <laughs> take what you yeah, yeah, take what you want from that. Uh, but I, I get see, I guess it provides some entertainment. It sure. does provide entertainment, and it's all fun and games really until it kind of directly affects your team. Sure. That's what I figured Absolutely. out. Absolutely. As soon as the team that you root for uh, loses a guy to the transfer portal, all of a sudden it's like, man, I wish the old rules were still in play. Yeah. Uh, but it, I also think it's pretty awkward that you can enter the transfer portal and basically look around for something better, hear from other coaches, but then you can still return back to your team, which we've seen some guys do. I have to feel like that's a little awkward right there, Uh, especially at the college level. It's different from the pro level. But this is like free agency on, on steroids right now is really what it is. And it got me thinking, I wonder how much this new part of the game in the transfer portal influenced the decisions of a guy like Roy Williams or a guy like Long Kruger, for example, Mm -hmm. both old-time coaches. This is one of the newer things in in college basketball that is taking over right now that they were probably still attempting to adjust to. Mm -hmm. Roy Williams, for example, never really had to deal with a ton of transfer issues. I thought when Walker Kessler got out of there this year, that really woke him up to the whole – because I remember like five years ago he said he hoped to coach until he couldn't do it anymore. Mm -hmm. I think that he left that open to interpretation, meaning until I – can't and or have no interest because a lot of things are changing right now and if that means that i've done all i can to recruit a guy and this is what coaches feel like they did everything they could to recruit a guy they got the guy they didn't have the season maybe that they promised they would have because that's pretty much impossible to do and the guy gets upset and he leaves and you think what's the point if i can't even keep i got it's every single year i got to go back here back here back here and and convince guys to come over here and and then stay don't Mm -hmm. leave after a year because things didn't go your way those are two older more traditional coaches and i honestly wonder because you're asking them to adapt and they could to Mm -hmm. that but it's a big adjustment right there for them to be able to uh, adjust the idea of a transfer portal and then continue to coach for years and years and years and i think that is going to be part of the exodus of coaches old coaches in the league everywhere and in all college basketball because this is a a young coaches game that understands a transfer portal that's something that's not easy to understand you have to learn it right away and learn it pretty quickly uh and and like I said, I'm not a huge fan of it based on me being a traditionalist for mm-hmm. college basketball because I, I like the idea, look, you go to your team, you were recruited, you chose where to go, mm-hmm. that's your team. You know, if you want to transfer, fine, but you got to sit out a year, that's kind of the price you pay if you sure. want to go somebody somewhere else. That's how I it, it, uh, don't have an issue with that. I've always, always said that's probably the way to go. I'm like you, maybe you can do it once, right? Mm-hmm. If you do it once, yeah. then you're done. But make sure it's, that, that kind of makes it – make sure you make the right decision. You better have it all ready to go because if you don't, then, then you're kind of stuck there uh, unless you want to sit out a year. But when Dick said that's going to ruin the game, again, I don't know if I would necessarily agree with that, but I do think it's going for everybody. It's mm-hmm. going to take a ton of adjustments. You have to basically start treating this, and it's it's interesting coincidence that we're going to have the transfer portal, which is basically free agency, like yeah. I said, on steroids, coming in with NIL 
coming in right before too long. You're going to get every all these athletes going to get paid for their name, image, and likeness too. We're inching a little bit closer to to the professional yeah. style of things every single day. And I just thought about that. I was like, you know, I wonder if we'll see that more often in the years to come where some of these coaches that have been here forever, you know, you think of like the Jim Bayheims, mm-hmm. uh, the John Calipari's, maybe even the Bill Selfs of the world, Coach K eventually. I mean, I think Duke is probably okay, but still some of those coaches, I'm like, man, I just, I don't want to do this anymore. This yeah. is, this isn't how I was taught to coach. This isn't how I have been coaching all these years. I never would have had to expect to adjust to this where players can come and go as they please. That's not how college sports could work. And I think that leads to the exit of some more coaches. That's how I've seen it. Yeah. And I think you're. I think you're right. I think if if you're looking at coaches, I think I think you probably Coach K and Coach Beheim would probably be the two that would would probably stick it out uh, the least amount of time. You know, Coach K is, you know, he hasn't been the 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 happiest of fellows the past few years, kind of complaining about some things. Beheim is just the older, the oldest of all of them. Um, yeah, it's interesting. You know, I mean, I. I like the transfer portal. I don't think anyone should just be a lot like there's there are there are like circumstances that that dictate. OK, well, listen, my grandma developed, you know, she she developed cancer now, you know, and I'm playing in Kentucky, but my family's from Washington state. So, you know, I'm going to I'm going to transfer closer to home so I can be with them. That that's that's fair. You know, if you just if you get unhappy because you only played 12 minutes a game then I don't think you should be able to leave Kentucky and go to wherever you want to go and play immediately thereafter. Um, I like the transfer portal. I think it's I think it's good for the game. I think it allows, you know, you, you don't have as many players that are, you know, that, that aren't happy anymore and, and they're just they're ruining a program. But I don't think it should just be willy nilly. Everyone can can come and go as they please and, and you can you're eligible immediately. That's why I feel like the NCAA needs to they need to tighten it down now and let everyone know, like, listen, this is this is special circumstances. You know, your coach left, whatever, we have COVID, everyone gets a free year, whatever, but we're 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 locking things down because if you if they allow if the NCAA allows players to continue to do what they're doing and, and kind of have free reign and then all of a sudden you throw NIL in there, then it's it's just going to be an absolute circus. Yeah, and I think it, he was Dick Vitale was spot on when he talked about the coaching because if you're a coach, you're thinking to yourself, I wanted to recruit this guy, but now I've got this guy over here that's sitting in the portal. I have mm-hmm. no idea what he's going to do, if he's actually going to leave or is he going to come back. Do I still go for this mm-hmm. guy that I wanted because I'm missing a piece? I wanted to adjust rosters and have it set up. I don't know who's going to be here, so I understand that. Part. Well, and and you kind of hit on it. You know, you look at there's there's currently three players, Texas Tech, that are in the portal. Mm-hmm. Um, Kevin McCuller was – thinking about going into the portal before they you know before they announced mark adams he's an assistant so he's stuck it out uh micah peavy was going to sign and he's he's out now he's most likely going to go to texas mac mcclung you know then you've got uh marcus santos silva he's another one that's in the portal uh terrence shannon declared he's in the draft but he's going to retain his eligibility so there's another player that's going to leave um they're not sure about tyreek smith but he's there he thinks he might stick around um, so, I mean, you just you have so many things that are up in the air. And that's and that's why if you flip it, like if a coach leaves, I'm all for a player being able to leave and go wherever they want. Because if if you're going to sit there and not you, but like if you're going to sit there and say, OK, well, listen, buddy, you signed a commitment, you signed a four year scholarship deal. Well, in your second year, if a coach, you know, decides he's not making enough money and another school is offering him one point seven million more per season and an extra year he can he can just transfer he can he can quit that job and take another contract and and leave with you know just basically that's it and those guys who committed to a coach are just well sorry you you're stuck i don't i don't, I don't agree with that i think it's it goes both ways yeah and i'm all for the players getting freedoms mm-hmm. i mean they they need to have some uh but the whole idea of of picking the schools because sure. you wanted to play there uh, for for multiple reasons and for a longevity of time. Now, some of them, if you're if you're good enough, you can right. you can be one and done. Uh, but most players, it's this is where I want to stay. You know, I want to I want to build here. I want to grow here. 
I want to help myself for the next level, possibly, or just my life here. I want to go to school here. I mean, that's right. That's a crazy thought these days. I want, to, I want to go to school at this college, by the Who way. Who does that? Yeah, I know. It, it seems like uh, I don't think that ever happens anymore. So there's certainly – I feel like the transfer portal can be debated for forever. I mean, and without anybody coming to a real conclusion about whether it's uh, completely negative or completely real, real, positive. Real yeah. opinion-based. No, I'm telling you, it really is. So when we come back here on the Afternoon Sports Drive, breaking news out of the National Football League. Find dun, out dun, what that is coming up next. Welcome back into the afternoon sports drive on the Triple Play Sports Radio Network. Patrick Wheeler and Levi Peck and Paul's back in studio. Zach Lancaster's here with me at Furniture Showcase as we are live at Fifth and Main downtown Stillwater. StillwaterFurnitureShowcase.com. Open Monday through Saturday, 9.30 to 6. you got plenty of time to come in right now and check out all of their deals. You can shop safer and avoid the big city crowds right here at Furniture Showcase. You can shop by phone at 388-7138, or you can text them. Go online from StillwaterFurnitureShowcase.com, of course, as we mentioned there. you got all the best brands like Ashley, Lazy Boy, Riverside, close to 50 top lines of designer quality furniture here at Furniture Showcase. Breaking news out of the National Football League, the New England Patriots have officially released Julian Edelman, wide receiver, who has been with the team since 2009, a slot receiver, and obviously been dealing with injuries for quite some time now. Last year, he was barely able to even get on the field. He apparently failed a physical uh, in his uh, in his time there with the Patriots here shortly before they released him, and now he is officially a free agent, which, of course, can only mean, right? I mean, am I crazy to think he would go anywhere besides Tampa Bay? Yeah, he ain't retiring. Uh, he's not retiring. No, he's going to Tampa. I, I would have to think the Bucks are going to swoop in. and. Gra- I mean, Tom Brady, I, I told you guys, he was probably somehow in on the whole failed physical thing. Failed physical. <laughs> he ain't said, no failed physical. He, he, said, he said, Jules, here's what you do. You go in there. You have a complaint still about your knee or whatever and make sure that it's it's too too bad and you can't you can't pass that Here, physical. Take these two pills. That's right. We're going to cause some <laughs> instant inflammation. Your knee's going to swell up. But it's just a water pill. Give them a great reason yeah. to have to cut you, and then guess what? You're gonna come back over here Crutch like old times. Yeah, yeah. You know, we're gonna be we're gonna be Super Bowl champions again. Uh, you guys know that this is the I'm talking to you and Levi here. This is the afternoon sports drive slash Julian Edelman uh, two hour podcast. So just so you guys know that um, he he is my guy, and I hope nothing but the best for him. It's crazy because if you look back, like last year was a complete disaster. For the page, and I, it's funny we say that for the Patriots, like they won nine games, but like still, <laughs> that's not that's not a great Patriot right. season by any means. Uh, but for Julian Edelman, it was he played in six games and didn't do anything. Uh, he had one good game in week two, and that was it. It's some it's hard for people to to remember sometimes, but uh, the year before that in 2019, he had a thousand yard season, right? And he had been in the league for what then, like nine years by then, ten years, and he had a thousand yard season. Yeah, he's only had three in his career, but he plays a slot. And I think what the best thing about what he's done in his career is that he redefined what it means to have toughness at that position. People all the time like don't like to give credit to receivers because of their toughness. They just like to see the flashy catches and all that. He did the dirty work over the middle of the field yeah, where did. you get smacked in the head after a play. You hold on to the ball, you get up and go do it again on the very next play. Like, yeah, of course the guy's going to be dealing with injuries. He played about as tough as anyone. I'm not sure he ever really got all the credit he deserved, uh, but – he did have one of the most incredible catches I've ever seen in my life. You remember that against the Falcons in the Super Bowl where it, like, bounced and off a guy's, like, leg, and he was able to somehow corral before it hit the ground by, like, centimeters. I'll never forget that one. It was wild. So I, I think Tampa Bay is the obvious spot. I would have to think. I haven't even checked. Uh, I'm, I'm sure they're about to put betting lines out already where he's going to land. But uh, I, I want to hear from both of you guys here. Is, it, is there any – other possible team you would think right now oh yeah well he might actually get need a wide receiver no, no it, if he doesn't retire like if he if he's just like you know what i still have some in me even if it's half a season i i could still play some 
it's either going to be Tampa Bay or retirement. Like that's those. I think those are the options. And and it's funny because if you on Twitter, every, like that's that's the general consensus is just retirement. I enjoy entire enjoy retirement. Julian, he ain't retiring. He's going to Tampa Bay. Like mm-hmm. that's it. Like that's the only that's the only place he's going. Yeah, that that's the consensus. It's supposed to be Tampa Bay, and it makes the most sense possible as well because the the Tampa Bay Buccaneers have not resigned Antonio Brown. That's the only guy that is truly missing out of all of this. So the easy fit in is take out Antonio Brown. You fit in Julian Edelman, and you miss almost nothing. And if you're still not confident confident in that wide receiver spot at pick 32, you can take somebody like Darius Tony there. But I mean. Julian Edelman is the easiest fit right there, and he can do exactly what Antonio Brown did in Tampa Bay to a T. And most likely, I'm going to assume Julian Edelman, if he goes to Tampa Bay, he's going to take whatever money they offer him, and he'll probably stay there as long as Tom Brady's there. Once Tom's gone, he'll probably retire as well. It should be the most easy thing of those two go out at the same time. Plus, since there's all this talk about how um, there's some people that don't consider Julian Edelman a Hall of Fame wide receiver, you put him on Tampa Bay, he's most likely going to get another Super Bowl ring. I'm not even going to throw it out the window and say, like, oh, Tampa Bay, I don't know. No, Tampa Bay is going to be the favorite to go and win another Super Bowl. And so to put him over there with Tom Brady, Tampa Bay, and if he wins another one, I think that inches him closer and closer to being a Hall of Fame wide receiver. Yeah, you know, I I like to think of other teams that need a receiver right now would have to be – on the phone saying, hey, come over here. I, I just don't know if he would even entertain that. Like, would he consider heading over to, to the Packers to play with Aaron Rodgers and Devontae Adams? Dude. Would he consider <laughs> going to – I know, I know, I know. That's that's pretty well. Would I'd he say, consider going to, to, to Kansas City or Buffalo or something like that? I was going to say, I, I'm looking at all these places. It's like, it's like, Carolina, do you have a guy named Tom Brady? No, but we got Joe Brady. Now that won't work. You look at all these other spots, and I'm sitting here like – None of these guys have truly, I guess what some would consider probably him, his best friend in Tom Brady. I mean, that seals the deal all the time. And then it's, you got Gronk. It's basically the Tampa Bay Patriots. I mean, what else do you need there? You can you can bring a cu- cardboard cutout of Bill Belichick and sit him in the corner, and that that's about it. Then you got a good team. you got Bruce Arians, who's turned into a phenomenal coach thanks to everything he's done. I mean, he was already a good coach, just needed the Super Bowl to redefine it. You look everywhere else. I mean, it doesn't fit what Julian Edelman probably really best fits with. It's to me, it's Tampa Bay or retirement. It's one or two. Yeah, and I don't think that Bruce Arians would be happy though if Bill Belichick's cutout was over there on the sideline. Like he right. he, he might look at it and like laugh and the whole time be like, "Ha ha, I've got your whole team over here." Maybe I was gonna say, uh, no. What he can do that, is yeah. he can throw uh, some of the uh, things that Tom Brady was drinking during uh, their parade flow and just toss it all <laughs> on Bill Belichick. Like, ha, look at where we're at now. <laughs> Well, well, Tom yeah, Brady also I, looks back and laughs as well. Exactly, he's laughing the whole time. I think he's laughing right now. I bet Tom Brady Brady is 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 just hysterical because he's like, oh, my boy's about to come back over here with me. I already got Gronk, and and think about it. Antonio Brown was on the Patriots for what a game. I mean, mm-hmm. so he technically was there too at one time. You already had him. Now you can get Julian Edelman. I mean, get this is wherever Tom Brady goes, like anyone's gonna follow at this point. They really are, especially with what he did by winning another Super Bowl. But I would have to think that Patriots fans, like, they, what a turnaround this was the last yeah. few years, right? I mean, you had a dynasty going. And then in a matter of a year and a half here, two years, uh, no Tom Brady, no Gronk, no Julian Edelman. Uh, it, it's Nine and, wins. Nine wins. And look who you're being, you're, you're just re-signed Cam Newton yeah. after the year that he had. Uh, that and Jared Stidham was was your backup. I mean, that's it's it's just unbelievable the turnaround that they've had. I hope I, I'm I'm with you guys. Even if somehow he weren't to end up on Tampa Bay, I don't see him retiring. I think he would go out there and at least want to have try to put together as much of a full season as he possibly can. Even if he were to go to Tampa Bay, though. You're not going to have an every down guy like you used to. I mean, with uh, with uh, the Patriots, he was not an every down guy this past year. Uh, he was coming in on second and third downs, and that was pretty much it. Uh, but I, I think he does become an instant, and I'll say this, back to an instant success if he's with Tom Brady. There's some connections that are so legit in the NFL that you can you can always say it's going to work no matter how old it seems these guys are, and that's one of them. I mean, they they know where each other's going to go uh, before the ball is thrown. It's one of those, one, one of the most fun to watch through all this time. So uh, I, I definitely agree. I would have to put money on Tampa Bay. While I think a lot of teams could could use his services at this point at wide receiver, 
yeah, it's uh, it's going to be, uh, I think, a shock if he doesn't end up there. But uh, we'll see. I mean, he's a guy that, like I said, been in there for a long time. Super Bowl MVP is a wide receiver. It doesn't happen that often. You know, when people talk about uh, how good he has or hasn't been, that's also one you got to throw in there for what he's done over the over the years uh, and kind of defied all odds with his size, right, going into that position. Uh, hands were incredible. Route running was incredible. And, and I know the durability gets tough after a long time in the league, but still. He's, he's something else, man. So, yeah, we'll keep an eye on that. Uh, we'll be, be surprised to see him land in Tampa Bay in the coming weeks. No, we'll be surprised to see him somewhere else. Very, very possible. Uh, if that happened, yes, we would be surprised. Uh, we come back here on the afternoon sports drive. Uh, Oklahoma State baseball over the weekend. Remember, they brought in UNC Wilmington. Uh, this was kind of a shock series to a lot of people. Didn't expect them to be the ones coming in uh, after all this time. And they were looking for a team after they were unable to play with. It was Central Arkansas, right? I think it was their original opponent Mm -hmm. uh, that ran into COVID issues. So they got them in here this weekend. And what did they do? Well, as a precursor to the next segment, they dominated. We'll talk about that coming up next. This is the Afternoon Sports Drive. Showed you true colors. I don't like what I see. Story keeps changing. I know what that means. Know what that means. I know what that means. How'd you go from being that somebody I believed into being someone that me behind the scenes? Can't forgive it. Sorry that I ain't never received. Taking what you need, then blame it on me, man. That's so prideful. Welcome back into the afternoon sports prideful. drive, Triple Play Sports Radio Network. Patrick Wheeler Crazy. and Zach Lancaster, oh, Levi Peck and Paul's back in the studio. We're live at Stillwater Furniture Showcase over here at Fifth and Main in downtown Stillwater. They're open today until 6 p.m., Monday through Saturday from 9 30 to 6 p.m. They have mattresses for any size bed and for the comfort type you like to sleep on. Names like Sealy, Serta, Tempur-Pedic, Ashley, Four Hands, and several other brands. Find your new mattress here at Furniture Showcase. Last segment, we looked at the breaking news of Julian Edelman being released by the New England Patriots. Here's the, the, the story, okay, to the league for him. This is incredible. No scholarships out of high school. He was a quarterback mm-hmm. at Kent State. He had one college catch for 11 yards. One catch for 11 yards. No combine invite. He was picked up in the seventh round. He was Brady's security blanket. Absolutely. I think that was the definite. That was exactly what he did. Mm-hmm. If Tom Brady needed to move the sticks, it was, it was I'm going to find Julian Edelman. Uh, and he wasn't a huge touchdown guy. He was, I'm going to move the sticks for you. Uh, huge part of the Pats dynasty, no doubt. I mean, they don't win Super Bowls without him uh, and a three-time champion, obviously. That's incredible. I think the biggest one right there, he had one catch in, in college for 11 yards, and he goes down as one of the better uh, slot receivers to ever do it. That That's really an incredible run. So there's your numbers there. Just kind of show and put it in perspective. And then the question, of course, has been, is he a Hall, is he a Hall of Famer? I, mean, I think it's it's hard to argue against not just that, because you don't base it all off everything I just read, but the stats, too, that he had a, part, a big part of the Super Bowls. I mean, three-time champion, come on. He was a big part of all of them, too. Uh, this guy is is was really incredible. I, I, I think he's Hall of Famer. Yeah, I don't think he's a first ballot. No, no, no. He, he, know, he won't be first ballot. No, he'll. It, you know, it'll be ten or fifteen years. Um, but I, I, yeah. You look at what he's done. You look at all the the championships he's won, and it's not like he was Antonio Brown with the Tampa Bay Bucks. You know, standing on the sideline getting a ring. I mean, he contributed. You know, in, in a pretty big way. Uh, to get them to those championships and to win those championships. So he'll I think he's a Hall of Famer. I, I don't I think it'll be a while, but but yeah, he he gets in for sure. Levi Hall of Famer. Uh I think eventually. It's going to take mm-hmm. a while because there's so many wide receivers that should be in. Reggie Wayne hasn't gotten in, Tory Holt. I know. You'll yep. you'll yep. look down the list and there's so many guys that you're sitting there and saying why in the world are these guys not in the in the Hall of Fame? They should be. I wish that they'd extend uh, the list to them more just, what is it, like five guys that usually get in the Hall of Fame? There needs to be a whole heck of a lot more that get in because there's so many names that deserve busts in the Hall of Fame. Uh, I think Julian Edelman will eventually get in there. It's going to be like one of those where it's like, it's going to take a good chunk of time. I'm going to assume, and this might be some... Uh, big hindsight i think that eventually tampa bay might walk away with one one more ring during this whole situation and i assume hopefully julian edelman's on there i think one more will help the case and i think julian edelman will eventually get in there it's going to be one of those where it'll be like five six seven eight years down the line after he's announced all right this is the year that you can go into the hall of fame 
Yeah, I'd agree with that too. I never did understand the the hate of it yeah. seems like of not putting receivers in the Hall of Fame as much as they do. You know, they're a huge part. I mean, they, even recently too, they've become even more so because mm. it's a it's a passing league by all means now. But still, uh, I comp- completely agree with you guys. It will take some time. And yeah, if he goes to Tampa Bay and they grab another ring with Tom Brady mm-hmm. and most likely do it with the help of Julian Edelman. Now, he could get hurt again, and that could just be the end of his career. Hopefully not. But if he does, yeah, it certainly helps the case. You get, grab another Super Bowl uh, with a different team, and, and it's just incredible to, to add on to that resume, no, no doubt. So we'll keep up with that story, see where he does land if he indeed uh, goes for another season, which, again, I think we'd be all pretty pretty surprised yeah. if, he, if he called it quits. Uh, all right, so Oklahoma State baseball recorded its third su- series sweep of the season over the weekend UNC Wilmington coming in uh it did in fact we were talking on Friday like this this uh this isn't gonna get played uh right it was it was coming down a little when we when we left the show it was coming down pretty good yeah uh, it was a good good storms brewing in Stillwater uh so when it came down we knew all right they're gonna have a double header they had the double header didn't matter uh for them because they were able to still win yesterday they won 10 to 4 when UNC Wilmington came in here like we looked at the team and said not not a terrible team by any means but we still thought like this was a definite uh, opportunity for OSU to to sweep a series, and that's exactly what they did. Yeah, and that's something like I'm. I don't know. Like I'm not necessarily surprised that Oklahoma State was able to do what they were able to do. Um, I mean, I think that once we once we really get into the heart of Big Twelve play, we're gonna you know we'll really see just how good. Um, this Oklahoma State team is. I was surprised that it with the first game was seven to six, and I think they I think they put some runs up late. Um, so that that kind of surprised me. But then you go back to it, the ten three, the ten four. Um, you look at how they got there, uh, and it was just such a dominating fashion. Um, I feel like each week, every, like every single week, you could have two or three days of buyer sells, and it could just just be based on plate appearances. And I think you could get away with that because you're going to you, – maybe not every single game, but in a series, you're guaranteed to see at least four or five home runs from Oklahoma State. I mean, this is such an incredible power team, and, and I'm really looking forward to seeing what they do once we really get into the bulk of it. Because once you get out of – once you get out of uh, Oral Roberts, you go to TCU, and I think that's going to be pretty tricky. And then you get a uh, you get a midweek two game series against Arkansas Pine Bluff. That'll be good. Um, and then you get right into the heart of it. You have three you have a three game homestand against Texas. Um, I'll be curious to see how the midweek series plays into that because you play Tuesday, Wednesday, and then you have a three game Friday, Saturday, Sunday series against Texas, who's pretty solid. And you get three games against uh, against OU. You know, and that's they're not great, but it's Bedlam, so that's always really tricky. Um, so it's. I think that this Oklahoma State team could go down as one of the more exciting to watch in Oklahoma State history, which is saying a lot because yeah. Oklahoma State has had some really, really exciting teams. But it seems like game in and game out, you got three or four guys uh, that, that that's just kind of put on a show. But what's fun is on the other side of it, the pitching is just as good. 21, 7, and 1 on the season, five in a row. That's the thing. They're they're kind of they're getting on a roll here. That's why bringing in UNC Wilmington had the potential to be really really good for yeah. them because you're able to sweep, keep this win streak going, and feel real good going into Oral Roberts tomorrow. Uh, and then, like you said, uh, uh, TCU is that's that's up next, right? Yeah, yeah that, you that, go to Fort Worth. They're one of the better teams right now uh, in the conference. So you look at what they're they're going to pose. That's going to be a great series. Did you see? I think it was Game Two, Carson McCusker's home run. Oh my gosh, he dropped a tank i mean that thing was absolutely blasted and it was something that people we didn't get to see early this year because he was hurt mm-hmm. and then he came back um and, and then got that one yesterday and he's looked good ever since he's come like he, he doesn't look affected by the back injury right now at all he i mean that that was just a bomb and, and we've seen a lot of them this year that's the thing not just home runs guys are hitting absolute bombs yeah. they're not they're not like was i gonna get over well that's the second one over the batter's eye 
He, he put like, that over the batter's eye. My yeah. God. That is unbelievable. That's a shot, dude. I mean, that, that takes a lot right there. Uh, yesterday, Christian Encarnacion Strand got his 10th home run of the season. Nolan McLean got his 7th home run of the season. That wow. was a no-doubter. As a freshman, he's coming in and I mean, showing the power, man. I mean, that's big time right there. Uh, you got so many guys that are – you had Kay Cabanis, Alex Garcia, and Houston Moore all had two hits. You think uh, you think Josh Holliday is going to want to send some more guys across the street, work out with Rob Glass during football season? <laughs> it's like, hey, <laughs> in case you guys didn't realize. You played you played baseball in high school, right? Yeah. You, you played basketball. You played, you played football. Yeah. Go walk on. Walk on across the street and go get some workouts in. When you played baseball, did, did you lift that much? No, well, you're about to, so go over there. Across the street. Yeah, get over there and, and come back and hit tanks for us next season mm-hmm. because that's when the, that's going to be our offensive identity is from now on we're just going to hit home runs. Like we are going to outscore you, but isn't, we're not necessarily just going to go for extra base hits. And all. We're going to put it over the fence well, as many times as we can. And what's great is it's a marketing tool. It could be HGH. Exactly. Holiday to glass to holiday. Oh, wow. HGH. HGH. Over the fence. <laughs> wow, my God. It's HGH. That's how they're hitting so many home runs. Call the NCAA. No, it's Josh Holiday to Rob Glass. Back to Josh Holiday. Hold HGH. Up. Hold up, NCAA. It's not what it means now <laughs> before you get your, your panties in a bunch because we know they already are. So calm down. Yeah. it's uh, th- This is a fun team to watch, man. It really is. Every single time they go out there, they can be anybody on any given day. We saw them get one against Vanderbilt this season. Yep. And they put up a ton of runs in that ball game. Texas Tech, they got one too. Uh, so do they have places to still improve? Sure, but this is a, a damn good team, 21-7. and seven. And like you said, the pitching. I mean, you can have all the offense you want, but come on now. You you forgot something. 21-7-1, sorry. The Patrick, sorry. The Patrick number. Yeah, we, we could just call it the Patrick game. Yeah. I, I Levi was there with me too, but I mean, come on. The like that, game. That was just, that was, the, God, every time I read the record, I'm like, why? We just chopped that off. It's, <laughs> it just frustrates me. He was number one. You know, yeah, you know how to fire me up. Just mention the, the tie game that yeah. Oklahoma State had in baseball. This <sighs> come on now. Uh, but, but, yeah, we'll get more into them later because some of the stats these guys are putting up are really incredible at this point. So that's all coming up. We're live at Furniture Showcase here. This is the afternoon sports drive on the Triple Play Sports Radio Network with Patrick Wheeler, Zach Lancaster, Levi Peckinpah's back in the studio. We're back with hour number two after this. And I don't know how we make it out. Back into the afternoon sports drive here on the Triple Play Sports Radio Network with Patrick Wheeler and Zach Lancaster live from Furniture Showcase, 5th and Main, downtown Stillwater. You can visit their website at stillwaterfurnitureshowcase.com. You can call them at 338-7138. Or how about this, as if that wasn't easy enough. For those of you that are, and I'll admit, okay, I'm like this sometimes too, you don't want to necessarily interact with the person at this moment whether it be on the phone or whatever, you can text them. Oh, my gosh. They, they got it here. You can just text them what you want. They'll, this place has it all. I mean, they'll, they'll get right back to you. I would I would definitely take advantage of that. And feature. then curbside pickup or free delivery. Yeah. And I you mean, don't have to deal with people. Do we really need to say anything else? New furniture for whatever your home needs. Living room sets, kids' furniture, recliners, entertainment pieces, home accents, bedroom suites, mattresses, home offices, and new dining rooms. Whatever you need, Furniture Showcase has it ready for you. And the best service. Available. Though I will say, if you were going to go into any store in Stillwater, this is the store you want to go into. All this nice stuff. It's true. It's one of the places you got it because it, it would be somewhere where you're walking around and you're like, didn't know I needed that. Now well, I do. And you have a, like, when you walk in, the theater part of it smells like leather. It's awesome. So, I mean, it's awesome. I mean, this place is just a real treat. Really? I mean, what more, what more could you possibly want? They have these sweet lamps. They do. They do have sweet lamps. Really yeah. retro. Some are like, uh, I mean, vintage style. It's awesome. I know you were super interested in one. They still got it. The it's big, right over the, there. The old greeny over there. They have to there. keep replacing it. It's not the same one. No. There's no way that's the same one. They have one. an endless supply because it goes out the door every day. Yeah. Uh, to I'm get in, in the second hour, we're going to get into some buy or sell. Are you buying? I'd buy that for a dollar. Or are you selling? You pick up the phone and you sell, sell, sell. This is Buy or Sell on the Afternoon Sports Drive. Make money, money, make money. Buy or Sell Afternoon Sports Drive, Triple Play Sports Radio, Patrick Wheeler, Zach Lancaster. All right, so I mentioned before we went to break, 
CES has 10 bombs this year and counting. The dude cannot stop hitting home runs. Uh, he had a great weekend again, and the RBI is continuing to pile up against Oral Roberts in the first matchup this, this year. He didn't have a home run, but he did have a couple of hits and an RBI. Buy or sell that the home run streak continues, and he goes yard against mm. Oral Roberts tomorrow. Yeah, man, I I don't want to sound like a Debbie Downer for not for not buying it because it's a sticky situation they put you in. Um, wow. But but I, I'll sell it. I, I think he's going to have a really good game. I, I don't know if he goes yard though. I think you might I think you might see him cool off on that just a little bit. Um, but but once you get back into it at TCU, then then maybe he picks it back up. But I'll I'll sell tomorrow just just for variety's sake because I mean how hot can a player stay? Right. I mean, good Lord. Pretty hot. My I'm telling God. you, because I, I think he's going yard. Now, listen, it's because his his swing is now built for that. Yeah. You know, you in today's baseball, you can literally build a swing. If you have the power and size to your body, you can build a swing that is designed to hit home runs because launch angle is a thing. Right. All that stuff is, is a thing. And I think CES has it down, man. I'm a GED guy. <laughs> it's, I'm telling you, he is, he's a guy that can, when he gets a hold of a ball, man, it, it puts all – now he's got the size, he's got the power to go with it. He gets the launch angle thing down. And like Tom had said earlier this season, you know, he had been prepped before mm. uh, coming here with, with everything else in his college career, and he gets here at this point. And I think there's always questions from a lower level. Will it translate into D1? Not a problem. Well, and I'll be curious if or you decides to pitch to him. But he, that's what that's what Tom said too. He, he goes, "Well, UNC Wilmington, would they even pitch to him?" Yeah, they should not. <laughs> they, have. they mistakenly did. They should not have. Yeah. Um, so I'm going to stick with baseball, and, right. and it plays into yours. Buy or sell OSU puts up five plus runs, five or more runs against ORU. Five or tomorrow. more. Yeah. yeah, man. This uh, this is a team, and I said this before last week that they have no problem uh, giving up, you know, a decent amount of runs because they will outscore you. That's the thing, and you when you can get that. For a baseball team, you're doing something pretty good. Uh, you're you're definitely hitting all the right marks right now. So that uh, yeah, I, I think they can put five up. Now this is uh, not the same Oral Roberts team that they've been used to facing in the past by any means, um, and, and they at times will tend to give Oklahoma State a game. We know that, uh, and, and even pull some out here. So, but but I think this is this is this lineup. We mentioned some of the names, you know, uh, yesterday with with guys that had two hits apiece. I mean that you had you had like four guys with two hits apiece in that game. Uh, two of them had home runs, and all of that equates to you know, getting five plus up because th- that to me is like a guarantee now almost every game because you, you have that ability. And something else I know the the baseball team has worked a ton on, especially from earlier this year, was not stranding runners, right? Because situational hitting was something you wanted to see more out of. Uh, even with a team that has a lot of power, it doesn't really matter all that much if you can't do it in situations where you've got guys and runners with runners in scoring position and all that. But they've really stepped that part up as well at the right time, too, because like you said, this conference slate really is about to ramp up here. I mean, uh, quite a bit. And you're going to find out <laughs> what this Oklahoma State team has against some of the better teams in the conference coming up. So I'm excited to see all that. I'll buy. I can see five-plus runs. Yeah, I, I'll buy it as well. You go back through the schedule, 10 out of the last 12 games for Oklahoma State, they have scored five or more runs. Uh, and that, that includes uh, that includes a 14-5 to win, several uh, several eight-spot games. Uh, oh, by the way, the 21-11 to win, 10-3, to 10-4. Um, five five plus wins is very doable. Uh, you look at you look at the power that they have at the plate. You know, there's three or four guys that are that are going to put it into play um, every single at bat. Um, pitching is really really good. I think they can also. I think they can probably hold ORU. Um, you go back, uh, what was it, two or three weeks ago uh, when they played them in Tulsa, beat them 5-0. I don't know if you're going to blank him again, but I could see a 6-1, 6-2 type of game. Um, so, yeah, I'll uh, I'll buy. Oh, by the way, <laughs> this, is, this is really great. So, uh, ORU, they played right after uh, your tie game. And if you go to OSU's website, it's tied 4-4 parentheses, ends in tie due to travel curfew. <laughs> like, they typed it out. Great. Like, this is the first time I've seen that. So, yeah, I'll, I'll buy 5+. I, I think I think that's very doable. <laughs> they should type that out, okay? They need – because anybody that – This is why it was a tie. Yeah, anybody that doesn't know, they're like, wait, how exactly did, did they come up with a tie in oh, college baseball? Wait, they're playing in Stillwater, so OSU didn't have a travel curfew. Ugh, <laughs> oh, Grand Canyon. 
Unbelievable. Yeah, put that in. Uh, yeah. You know what? You're welcome. From now on, when I say the record, I'm just going to put that as like a little side note next to it. Yeah, I do. To, you have to say, uh, you got to say, and one due to travel. Curfew. And one, parentheses. Due to, tra- due to travel cur- curfew. Close parentheses. Close parentheses. Yeah, yeah there welcome. you go. Yep. I like it. That's it. it. Uh, so we, t- we talked about Kyle Pitts a lot on Friday. Uh, potentially... Uh, Dallas wanted to, to move up. There was some word that Jerry Jones is in, in love with him. Mm-hmm. Um, so we'll, we'll, he'll be one of the more interesting players to see where he ends up, regardless of where he ends up. Oh. Buy or sell in his rookie year, five-plus touchdowns for yeah, Kyle Pitts. I, I could see that. Um, you look at just how dynamic he is, um, and, and I think I think five-plus touchdowns as a rookie is very doable. Um, can he make that transition in his first year? Um, now, if he goes to Dallas, it's like twelve touchdowns, like that 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 blue and that blue and silver man, something about it, Dak Prescott. So, but I I think I think five I think five plus is very doable in a in a rookie season. It is, and especially for a guy at his position, because if he doesn't camp in the red zone, yeah. and, and I mean build up camp in the red zone, then they're not. What, it doesn't matter what team, they're not utilizing him properly. Properly, I mean, it could be the the Jets for crying out loud if he didn't get five touchdowns as as that at that position. And he's look, it, it, let's not act like he's just going to come in and completely dominate everybody he faces. I mean, right. this this is the NFL. There's going to be defensive backs that won't let you push them around they're going to be really physical with them off the line they're going to bump them they're going to make sure things aren't easy for him um but if he lands with the right like i was thinking you know if dallas doesn't move up and he were to go to atlanta Mm -hmm. you don't think matt i mean look what matt ryan has done with tight ends in the past you don't think he would succeed there uh there's really not a lot of teams that you wouldn't think immediate success well that's it like he wherever he lands whether it's dallas or whether because you got blake jarwin you know and you would have to think that he'll be healthy enough um, but but even if he like let's just say for grins and gig, even if he goes to Dallas like he'll be successful, but he's not going to go to a team that doesn't need a tight end, you know, or that that doesn't uh, that doesn't have a receiving need, you know. There he's not going to get drafted by a team like he's not going to get drafted by Pittsburgh that's super deep at the receiver position. That team is going to need they're going to have a need for a, a very talented receiver, and Kyle Pitts fits that bill. So he five yeah. five touchdowns is very doable. I think at that position. People have seen what Travis Kelsey, what George Kittle, what yeah. Darren Waller has started to do, what Mark Andrews did when he came into the league. They want their own. The teams want their own because they want to run some offenses through that. Because we talk about running backs being a big part of the passing game, catching short passes, things like that, yeah, and, and, and being able to, to kind of get some dump-offs and things. Tight ends can be the same way. Mm-hmm. You get some of the, the elite, like I just mentioned, that are able to run a lot of actual – receiver type routes and get open but a lot of the times they are a safety valve for any quarterback and I, I do think that that Dallas tight end room would be interesting because you would have him you'd have Blake Jarwin obviously who they like and then you would have Dalton Schultz who came on last year and actually had a pretty decent season towards the end of the year with no Blake Jarwin he actually played well so that that becomes a pretty deep position where teams would probably give anything to have one of those three. Dallas yeah. could end up with all three, potentially. That'd be wild. Uh, all right, Levi, I'll throw you in on this one, too. Buy or sell, he's uh, he, five-plus five touchdowns for Kyle Pitts, regardless of where he lands. Uh, make that a super buy. Uh, no matter where he lands, I think he's going to be an excellent tight end. I Again, I don't think him pegging him with Dallas would be the best fit, but there's so many teams that would be able to utilize a tight end like Kyle Pitts because – not only have lots of people already scouted and said, but I also believe he might be one of the best players of this draft. You could go with one of these quarterbacks, but half the time, usually the the first couple players that fly off that aren't quarterbacks are usually the best players of the draft, and there's no doubt in my mind that Kyle Pitts will be one of them. I think no matter where he goes, it doesn't matter the spot. that He'll be used as one of those essential players, so I, I'm going to super buy. And, and is it fair to think that, like I said, with, with- – franchises are trying to find their own super tight end where they can run offenses through them oh yeah that that is completely fair because we've seen a lot of these teams that have these tight ends like like you've been saying when you went through the list uh, a lot of these guys with these tight ends they've been able to make very much pretty dynamic systems you can even go all the way back to philly and how they were able to get all the way yes even back with nick Foles, but when they had tight ends down the wazoo with Zach Ertz, with uh, Trey Burton, with Dallas Goddard, how they were being able to intertwine all 
those guys and make a system completely insane. Then you've had the rise of Travis Kelsey, Mark Andrews, all these various guys, my boy Darren Waller. So many guys that have just been able to take over the lead and change the game for some of these teams. I mean, we even saw this past season where Darren Waller was, I believe he was the leading uh, receiver for uh, for the Las Vegas Raiders. So that could oh, he be, was. He, yep. was, he could have that potential role in, honestly, anywhere he ends up. I really, really, really like Kyle Pitts in a Carolina Panthers jersey. And that might be a little bit of spoiler for uh, my mock draft later tonight. But he fits to me at, at best as a Carolina Panther uh, with him being maybe that number one target for Sam Darnold. But, hey, I, I'm not a guy who's getting paid millions of dollars to draft these type of guys. That still sounds weird to say for, for Sam Darnold. Sam Darnold. Hey, mm-hmm. it, but, but you know what? Maybe they need their next Greg Olson. I they mean, do. Greg, Greg Olson was a beast. And, and, yes, you were right about the Raiders. What was that stat of Reggie Zach? It was something like the Raiders had wide receivers caught like 40% or something mm-hmm. of their passes, like on, like Darren Waller and the running backs were the rest. That was yeah. unbelievable. Yeah, What's man. your next one? So I'm sticking with the NFL, uh, which, which is wild because I, I typically don't. Let's go. Early. I like it. Yeah. I'm going Pittsburgh. All um, right. I'm going Big Ben. Buy or sell. We, I think, I think it's pretty safe to say this is probably it. This is probably the last season for Big Ben. I'd be really, really shocked if he came back for 22. Um, buy or sell. He throws for 3,500 plus and 20 plus touchdowns. Which, a little bit of context. Yep. Obviously, uh, he gets injured in 2019. 351 yards. So the last time he didn't throw for 3,500 yards, other than that anomaly, was 2012. He threw for 3,200. And 65 yards and then with touchdowns 20 plus the last time he didn't throw other than the the injury year was 2010 when he threw for 17. He's guaranteed that those stats right there I think if he's if he plays 16 games right if he if he's healthy and then uh-huh. he 17. That's right oh yeah oh oh we yeah. added the extra game you're right oh, 17 he, won't, games. he won't play it. <laughs> <laughs> if, if, if Big Ben can make it all the way through yeah which again I was pretty shocked he stayed yeah. healthy this past year after yeah. he got hurt in 2019 I expected him to have success in 2020 and he did I mean they, they, the Steelers were 11-0 now we know the collapse was bad but they were 11-0 and then Big Ben still was able to do that without making a ton of big time deep throws you know he's able to to get what he finished with uh, 3,800 plus yards and 33 yep. touchdowns yep. Uh, which that was again you're, you're going to the middle of the field now they had a deep really talented wide receiver core I'll give them that but I remember this offseason, we didn't really know what was going to happen. They got Dwayne Haskins over there. Like, okay, was he going to be the guy? Was Mason Rudolph ever going to get another chance? And then they're like, hey, you know, it was a bunch of drama. Is Big Ben actually going to come back? We're going to restructure and do all this, and then he does come back. So everything is just like kind of put to rest for now. But I will buy that if he stays healthy. Can I put can I put that little uh, part in there on it? Because if he does, yeah, I think he's guaranteed uh, to push 4,000 yards and 30-plus touchdowns because he does have that in him. And that right there shows you why Pittsburgh really were yeah. like – they were comparing those other two, and they were like, we don't know what we're going to get from them. Like we've seen what can happen with those other two quarterbacks we bring Big Ben in, and that right there is doable. The main thing about the Steelers is all of a sudden they've got a lot more competition in their division – right now than they have in a while because the Browns aren't going anywhere. In fact, I think they're still trending up. The Ravens aren't going anywhere. And all of a sudden the, the competition is, is a lot stiffer for, for them. So I, I agree. I would be surprised if Big Ben were to come back past this year. He wants to go out on the high note. And I hope he stays healthy because I like watching him play. If he does, yeah, he will surpass those stats. Yeah, I agree. If he, if he stays healthy. I, I don't know if he gets as close to 4,000 uh, as he did this year. I, I think – I think maybe more than 3,800 would be a bit of a stretch. Um, same thing with probably 30 plus touchdowns. You know, he threw for 33 last year. Um, I don't, I don't know how much more than than what he put up last year that he's able to do. Um, you know, he started 15 uh, 15 games that he played last year. If he if he stays healthy, um, I, I could easily see him. You know, 36, 36 and a half, 3,700 yards you know, 28 plus touchdowns um, because you look at the receivers he has. I mean, he has, he has the weapons around him that you can, you can easily, you know, dink and dunk your way. What he average, what, 200 and 253 yards a game last year, which his career average is 259. So, I mean, pretty good. You, you can, you can, you can dink and dunk. I could dink and dunk my way to 250 yards a game with those receivers. Um, so I, yeah, I, I, I think, I think 3000 plus and, and, and 20, what did I say? 20 or 25, whatever it is, the touchdowns, I, it's very doable. Yeah. And it's, uh, 
the receivers with Juju coming back like that, I'm sure that makes him more comfortable. Chase Claypool is yeah. an emerging star. Uh, Deontay Johnson has a lot of skill if he catches the ball, which has been kind of an issue for him a little bit too. Well, and James Washington. Sure. James he's Washington. A, he's a solid receiver. Yeah, I, I think he needs to get more snaps here and there, man. I Same. really do. I think yeah. he, he could do every a lot. other Oklahoma State fan. They're just sitting. Unfortunately, he's he's in one of the deepest, if not the deepest. If he's pool. if if he's plays for any other team outside of like two or three other teams he's he's a number two receiver i think he has that ability i mean i really do i think he he's shown that and he's good for touchdowns every now and again they bring him in on the goal line for a reason what pittsburgh needs to do is go and draft tylen wallace oh man get get another receiver to add that that they wouldn't even big ben would even know at that point (laughs) at that point he he just throws yeah he someone's gonna catch everyone on everyone run a deep route Cross twenty yards down you and I'm just, just toss it. throw it in the middle of the field. Tevin Jenkins was on a mock draft reported to go to the Pittsburgh Steelers in in the first round. So that would be interesting. He, yeah, would be good. If he was blocking potentially in his rookie year for what could be Big Ben's final year. How about yeah. that? For I don't to, know to, if to make it that far. Yeah, I, I know what what uh I'm I'm with you too, Levi. I was thinking that when I saw that mock draft. I'm not sure if you would either. But man where where where, where are the Steelers? Uh you have that pulled up. Let me take a look. I'm trying to. I want to say. I think they're like 23, like, 24. Yeah, I was going to say, I want to see early 20s. And I believe that is correct. And I've seen people say that before, at that, some of their mock drafts, that Tevin Jenkins would go around 20 even. Yeah, 24. I was, right before that. I was going to say, I, I could see anywhere between 16 and 20, you know? Mm-hmm. Like, if, if, if he's still there when the Steelers, like. Something has seriously gone wrong if Tevin Jenkins is there by 21. I don't think he makes well, it past 17. Yeah, yeah, that's what I'm saying. Like if he's if he makes it to the 20s, then then something has something has gone wrong between now and the draft for Tevin. Jenkins. There were rumors that Kansas City was thinking about moving up to get him, um, which I think it's it's possible. It's possible they do need offensive line help as long as they don't draft a number one overall. <laughs> yeah. Then the then the Chiefs will make a right choice. Well, and then they'll come in and and I would never doubt it if they got him. I mean, if he coming into mm. Kansas City, yeah, he's a Kansas guy, right? Like that would yeah. that would fit in pretty he well. He's from Kansas, uh, right? Yeah. And, and so the Salina, I think, is yeah, that right? I, I, something like that. Yeah, I just know he's from Kansas. I forgot where he, where he's from exactly, but he uh, you know would fit in. And and you look at everybody else that would Topeka. go after him. Topeka. Um, I saw the another draft today, mock draft. They had Panay Sewell. He was the first offensive lineman being taken in the draft, and he was moving down on some on some mock drafts as well. So we'll see. I can't see him dropping too far though. I I would be shocked if he dropped significantly. I really, yeah, really I, I don't see double digits for yeah, Benny Sewell. I would too. Levi, did you? Uh, would you buy or sell the the? What was the Ben Roethlisberger stats? Uh, three thousand and twenty. Thirty thirty five hundred plus 3500. yards and twenty plus touchdowns. Yeah, thirty five hundred yards. I will buy that because if you look at Big Ben's stats, as weirdly enough, as he's gotten older, his stats have gone up. He's been able to crank up more yards and more touchdowns as he's gotten older. Because if you look when he was younger, uh, he was barely scratching over 20 touchdowns. So I think I can buy that. And most, well, li- I think that goes into that goes into the receivers mm-hmm. that Pittsburgh has put around, and they find like he's always had a decent receiver. But now you you've got two, three, four guys that can go out. It, it it's easier. The thing especially is, especially for an aging quarterback with a bad arm, you're also gonna have to put into it how's that offensive line going to look because. With that offensive line he's had, it's veterans that have been in with years, been been with him for years and years, and that was truly a big crutch of how he was able to easily do it. I mean, when you had Alejandro Villanueva on your left side, who was big veteran, who was able to get some big blocks, and then of course you had a Pouncey brother in the middle who was uh, dealing damage to anybody. I mean, yeah, you could easily have Big Ben uh, be able to get a couple really good passes off to some of these wide receivers, and if they wanted to catch it. But I'm, I, I will buy it as long as Pittsburgh puts the right offensive line in there to block for Big Ben. If not, that's why, you're going to be reaching. And that plays right into health. Right, right it does. Yeah. And that's why if Tevin Jenkins were to fall to them, I, they would probably have to take him. Pittsburgh's going to have to I, trade I think, up, man. Yeah, I, 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 I agree. I'm I, telling I would you, be shocked. Tell me Tevin Jenkins doesn't look so smooth in a Las yeah. Vegas Raiders jersey. That that cool. black and oh, that black and silver on Tevin Jenkins looks Fabulous. Well, it matches his new attitude. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah. Stuff that oh, yeah. we can't with play the, on air. That's yeah, right. Yeah. With can't that, play again. He goes straight in the Raiders. They probably when they when they heard his press conference there, he, they probably were like, "Oh my gosh!" But what's great about it though is his. Uh, if you go back, I'm sure you guys have all seen it. Um, his like yearbook photo, 
his <laughs> you know, like freshman or sophomore year at Oklahoma State, he looks like it looks like a giant teddy bear. He's just you know he's wearing the glasses and he looks like he's fourteen. Hi guys. And he's like he's tweeted out so many times like please, can we please get rid of this photo? And like he's gonna make several million dollars and be one of the he's gonna be a really dangerous offensive lineman in this rookie class, and and that's gonna be his nice. photo. Like, I, just accept it, man. That's right. It's fine. Just accept that photo. I, I would be worried for him, though, if he went to Vegas because of what they do. Like, we just saw him purge their line. Mm-hmm. Like, mm-hmm. it seems like they, they make questionable choices every now and again. Now, they, they might offer him a large contract, right. but I don't – if I were him – I wouldn't want to. That would be a franchise I'd be but not tell me, be stuck in for a long time. Tell me it doesn't make sense, though, of how with Oklahoma State, how we've went heavy, heavy, heavy in the past couple of years on the run game, and then over you look at the Las Vegas Raiders – They've got Josh Jacobs and Kenyon Drake, and yes, they have purged their offensive line. But, I mean, you're still going to be able to get very good money whenever your rookie contract's up. And eventually they'll fill in that hole at uh, right guard. I'm pretty sure they've signed the center who they want to be the heir apparent to Rodney Hudson. So, really, it's just that right guard spot that's looking pretty lonely. So, I mean, for at least this first year, it's not going to be a bad year for Tevin Jenkins. Yeah, no, wherever he goes, it'll be a needed instant impact. And I think he has that ability uh, and he's going to be one that, that I agree with you guys. Whoever grabs him, and if they move up to do so, that's a steal right there in the first round with what he's going to bring to a team. When we come back here on the afternoon sports drive. We're going to take a look at the latest on Deshaun Watson, more stuff coming out about him over the weekend and what's going on with his case. Uh, where has it advanced to? Find out next. This is the afternoon sports drive. into the afternoon sports drive on the Triple Play Sports Radio Network. Patrick Wheeler and Zach Lancaster. Levi Peckinpah is back in the studio holding things down for us. We're live at Stillwater Furniture Showcase, 5th and Main in downtown Stillwater. Having a ball, by the way. Having a great time. Visit stillwaterfurnitureshowcase.com, and they're open from 930 to 6, Monday through Saturday. If you can't get there on those days and you're like, only Sunday, fine, no big deal. 1 to 5, come on in here and you can check out everything they have to offer. No waiting necessary on the furniture or mattress you want. They have a store full, as we can attest to, of mattresses and furniture for any room in stock ready to deliver to your home anywhere in north-central Oklahoma. Uh, Patrick Wheeler and Zach Lancaster here on the afternoon sports drive. So over the weekend, basically right now with the Deshaun Watson stuff, it's like you have to keep up every day or or something's going to be missed because it just continues to evolve daily, daily, daily. Uh, Well, over the weekend, it was an interesting story because there was a Texans beat reporter. You see this? I have not. There was a Texans beat reporter that was fired after he defended Deshaun Watson. Uh, he went on another radio show. So it could have been like us getting him on, and he came on to a radio show. I think it was in Boston uh, is where it was. And this actually happened last month. Uh, he's covered the, the Texans since 2015. The, the radio show happened last mm-hmm. month. Um, and this was, this was his quote, okay? This is what got him fired. Quote, he was talking about Sean Watson. In his case, you know, it's kind of you don't negotiate with terrorists. People are demanding money. They're asking for money. It kept escalating. It kept going up and up and up. You're talking about more and more funds. I'm not going to say how much it got to, but my understanding is, you know, that there was an admission that it was something, you know, that this was, you know, just a money grab, unquote. When he compared it to the negotiating with terrorists, that, that's what that's what got it, right? I mean, I mean, that was that was the no go. Uh, not smart, right? I mean, plain and simple. You, you, if you go on a radio show. And regardless of how you feel about the the Sean Watson situation, you got to know how to put it out there. And I'm, you know me, I'm all for uh, being able to say what you want, mm-hmm. but you have to do it and, and be able to adjust to the platform that you're on. 
right? And that's something that, that was messed up there. Uh, and you know I loathe cancel culture. I don't like any of that stuff. And I'm not saying that this guy should have been immediately fired by any means, but bad idea, right? Doesn't he understand that was a bad idea to say that? Uh, and to me, it's very possible. I think we've both agreed on this before with this whole situation. It's mm-hmm. very possible that some of these accusers are in it for the money. Yeah. I mean, it is. But now you've got the judge ruling that 13 other accusers have to come forward and disclose their identity. That's the next step. So we're going to find out yeah. whether this was set up or not because you're going to have these people come forward, most likely, hopefully, if it continues to, to progress here with the case and they you know, reveal who they are. Yes, uh, indeed, in fact, I am a real person. Here I am. Let me tell you my story. Well, and think about how traumatizing that could be, though. I, and, and I think that's that – that, ha- That's why you had you had Busby fighting against yeah. it. He was like, look, we don't want them to have to go yeah. through that. But the, the, the lawyer was – or the uh, judge, pardon me, was like, hey, that, that's and, Texas law. We're going to do it. Yeah, and I get it. Like, you know, and, and, and that's the thing. You have to look at it from both angles. You know, you, you have to look at it from he is, you know, allegedly – being you know he, he's on the hook for all of what he did allegedly and on the other hand it's like man he very possibly could have done this you know like but it's also could be a money grab like it's there's so many different angles and aspects but imagine if you're one of those 13 victims you know that like okay yeah this happened to me and like how traumatic and life all like it's already life altering but then you're forced to you know you either give up your name or he walks, you know, like your life is already changed. And now all of a sudden the entire world knows you were one of the people that this allegedly happened to. Like that's, that's some heavy stuff, man. Mm-hmm. That's some, that's heavy stuff. Yeah. It's one of the, the tougher parts about things yeah. like this. It, it really is. And, um, at that point I would be saying, okay, you know, and again, we're all just assuming that this is how, you know, this is real and everything. Uh, then if that's the case, uh, you, you, if you're Busby, you tell him, hey, look, this, this is hopefully something that you can come out and make a difference in that this doesn't happen to anybody else. That's what the Ashley Solis girl was trying to say when she came out with, with her statement, that she was the you know, first one to disclose her identity. Um, but, I mean, the, the more we read into this, the more we see that there were so many different masseuses. I'm not fully drawing conclusions, as you know. It's irresponsible to do that yet without the case completing. Uh, but it, it comes out to me right now that this is just something that Deshaun Watson, like that's what he was into, right? If that's the case, like he was into the whole the whole massage thing. Now he obviously took it to the to the next level, and that's something you can't do if it's not consensual. I mean, that's that's plain and simple, and that's what it is. The details that are being provided in this case are grisly, man. Mm-hmm. They really are. If you look at every single account that's been given, uh, it's a a really strange, repetitive. Uh, instance that went on with all these different women um, and and the fact that you know we saw I think we read Friday that they gave out the whole uh, excuse of well the the pandemic is what caused all of this because he didn't have an opportunity to have normal massages and stuff with with uh, masseuses he had to go that's why he had to use Instagram and go find a bunch of them like okay I'm not I'm not I'm not sure I'm really buying that because to me what you're doing here uh, let's let's be honest you're going on Instagram, like I said on Friday, you saw the masseuse that you wanted, that you were attracted to, and said, I'm a, I'm a professional athlete, I'm going to go over there, I'm going to do this and say, hey, I would like a, like a massage like most professional athletes do, and well, then he took it to the next level. Did you see the article that came out Friday evening? Uh, Charles Robertson of Yahoo Sports, he put this out uh, 712 on Friday evening. Um Deshaun Watson, his defense team has came out and said messages led to consensual yeah, he sexual did. Yeah, encounters, they said that. Yeah. not assaults. Yeah. You know, so that's, you know, that's another level, another layer that they're going to have to try to sift through, you know, and I, it, with each passing day, it just seems like, like you said, you're going to have to stay up to date with it. You're going to have to read into it because with each passing day, it seems like a new victim comes out or a new layer comes out from his defense team. Uh, or the victims, you know, like the prosecutors, and it's 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 a really really heavy multi-layered thing that is not going to get solved anytime soon. And that's what I said from the beginning. If you would think that there is a text trail here, that would be something that you would expect to be getting dug into. That's yeah. why you were you were curious. People were curious. Okay, why? wasn't this filed with actual law enforcement earlier on so that this could get done right if you had lawyers attempting to find all these messages well okay how much can they really do compared to law enforcement that's why there were questions on that and if you have like you said yes 
you know, Sean Watson's legal team comes out and like, guys, this was completely set up as, as a consensual thing. Okay, well, can can we prove that? Yeah. I mean, were were there text messages that because that, look, that's the last thing I want out of all this is Deshaun Watson to be set up by all this. And I, I yeah, I've said it before. I think that's a long shot, but I don't want him to be falsely accused of everything because that means you've got another situation where a guy's reputation is completely thrown down the toilet. Because I think I think that's what what Levi said last week. Is it is? It's true. No matter what the outcome is, is of this. We will think of that with Deshaun Watson and everything that's going on from now on until the day he retires. Absolutely. It'll be the first thing that pops into your head. So I don't want that for him. But, again, it, it seems like a, a very far-fetched thing. It, but, like you mentioned, they're bold enough to come out and say that if they say that it was all completely consensual. Mm-hmm. Well, that is completely conflicting as to what we've heard on the other side. Yeah. And and I do believe that every passing day with Deshaun Watson, it seems to be getting worse for him. The idea, and this is what I've heard thrown out there by former lawyers, people that have thrown out advice out there, has been if they were counseling Deshaun Watson, it would have been already right now, look, you need to get ready and settle these right now. Yep. That means, you know, we, we, we forget about it going to trial. You, it might cost you uh, well over $10 million or more. Uh, if you have to pay off, you know, a million dollars to each person, fine, but you need to go settle that right now because if it goes to trial, you're done. I mean, plain and simple, you are done. Uh, whether he and that's you know how I how I feel about that when it comes to uh, being able to basically pay pay victims or, or you know accusers off and stuff like that. It's not the way. Like if it, if a crime actually happened, it should be prosecuted and, and taken to court, and then you are decided if you're innocent or guilty. But this thing, I'm telling you, every single day that keeps passing by, nothing good is happening for Deshaun Watson. He's not going to play in the league anytime soon. He's all of a sudden, he was the hottest trade commodity out there. Every team, I mean, there were every team that needed a QB was lined up, ready to do whatever it took. And it was such a deal, big deal. The Texans wanted him to keep keep him so much, they weren't even fielding phone calls. Yeah. So remember that? We had to hear that all these teams were having to leave messages with the organization because they wouldn't even field calls. They didn't want to get rid of this future Q- QB and a stud that they have with Deshaun Watson. And now we're flipped to the side where it's like, oh, we wish we could get rid of him for anything right now. Like, we, we yeah. wish we would have pulled the trigger. And you, know, you never saw this coming. Obviously, the team didn't see this coming, right? That was a that was a funny conspiracy theory from the start of yeah. all this, was that the Texans were involved somehow, even though that made zero sense. Uh, but this, I'm telling you, every single day it's, it's, it's getting worse. And that's why I've been expecting at some point for us to hear, well, new development in this story, multiple accusers have received – financial backing here from Deshaun Watson and have decided to uh, come off with the charges and all this stuff and they're moving on with their I settled, really settled outside yeah I really did expect that to take place and it still could at some point however it seems more unlikely because you get their legal team like you said doubling down basically and being like no this was all consensual man these were consensual adults doing all this and there's nothing wrong with that uh, so th- this continues just to play out every single day. We'll keep you up to date with it like we have with the whole Deshaun Watson mess as this continues. When we come back here on the Afternoon Sports Drive to round things out, we'll tell you what we learned that's coming up next. Feel like I'm going to puke because my taxes are due. Do my password begin with a one or a two? Been a hell of a ride, but I'm thinking it's time to grow. Man, I'm up to something. Welcome back into the afternoon sports drive on the Triple Play Sports Radio Network. Patch Wheeler and Zach Lancaster live from Furniture Showcase here at the main in downtown Stillwater. Talked about Julian Edelman in the first hour, officially being released by the Patriots. Well, we have more news. Here is what Julian Edelman just posted on his Twitter three minutes ago. Nothing in my career has ever come easy, and no surprise. This isn't going to be easy either. Now, I've always said, I'm going to go until the wheels come off. And uh, they finally have fallen off. Due to an injury last year, I'll be making my official announcement of my retirement from football. It was a hard decision, but the right decision for me and my family. There's Julian Edelman officially announcing his retirement and putting the word on it that, uh, in fact, it was very much injury-related there. Um, and 
I, I can agree. You know, look, if, if there's been players that have said that, you know, Andrew Luck was a great example. He's like, man, I just I, – I, I had too many injuries. Like, I don't want – I've seen what happens to some players in the – that has happened in, after they've played – National League or National Football League football, and it's something that isn't great for a lot of guys because they deal with injuries for the rest of their lives. Julian Edelman, as we talked about, suffered many of them at that position. Uh, so look, if he thinks it, and he might be right, you know, even if he went to Tampa Bay, like I said, I don't know how productive he would have been able, what he would have actually been able to do, would he have been able to play a full season, uh, how many downs would he actually get in. So uh, this is one of those where it's like, man, salute, tip your cap to one of the one of the all-time greats, in my opinion, at that position. Um, and it's it's not completely, I, I would say, absolutely. I mean, could we see, would it shock a ton of people if he were to <laughs> come out of retirement not at some bit. point to, to Tampa bit. Bay? I mean, look, I, I don't know. It's It's certainly in the realm of possibilities, but for now, Julian Edelman calling the career, and it was a great one, though, Zach, I would say for sure. No, absolutely, and, and that's the thing. Like, I, I, I applaud him. You know, it's time – well, for one, he's played a while, but, you know, he, he's realized it's time to, to, to step aside. You know, I, my body can't take it anymore. Because um, if he does come back, you know, he goes to Tampa Bay, like, what's he do? You know, like, there's not going to be much that he's able to do in Tampa Bay other than, you know, sign up like a, a vet minimum – and just stand on the sidelines for for 17, 18 games. Um, so yeah, I, I applaud him. He's he's had a, a hell of a career, and like like we're all saying, you know, sometime I would think sometime within the next five to ten years, I think you'll see him, you know, getting that gold jacket. I love Julian Edelman, man. Love what he did on the field, no doubt. Officially announces his retirement there on his Twitter page uh, 14 minutes ago, and it's already blown up completely. Everyone. Uh, giving words of thank you, and then there's those, of course, that are like, dude, you were the most I, – I hated you throughout your entire career, and you ruined a lot of my, <laughs> my memories and uh, great, good memories in football, thanks a lot type of thing. So little, there you go. A little disappointed he didn't keep his nasty playoff beard to make the to – Yeah, the video. whenever he shaved that off, I was like, man, that was like part of his uh, his it. identity. That was, that was how you remembered him, no doubt. We'll have more on him uh, in the days to come, no doubt, when we look back on his career. Uh, let's get into what we learned here to finish out the show. The day is coming to an end. Time to find out if these two got any smarter. Let's find out what the guys learned today on the Afternoon Sports Drive. Well, well, I learned something today. Zach, I learned that your Atlanta Braves mm. keep getting the short end of the stick. My goodness. In Major League Baseball. I think all of baseball wow. lost, lost that one. Yeah, I agree. You know, they had the All-Star game, which I thought was – senselessly ripped away from them. Now they lose a game on a missed call at home plate by the home plate umpire. Uh, and I'm telling you right now, it was reviewed for five minutes, right? Like you had a five minute review on a, a dude sliding in and he clearly was uh, not touching home plate no. at all with his foot here. Um, and, and I'll make sure to get the names right. Alec Baum was on third base. Uh, was the one that uh, came in and uh, for the Phillies and slid in on a bang bang play. All this started as well from in the outfield. Marcelo Zuna got a, he's got a lot of pop, but everybody will run on him because yeah. of his arm. His lack of of uh, strength in his arm out there has always been an issue. This was a shorter fly ball in the left field. He comes up, gets it, makes a it's it's a couple hoppers, but it was online. That was the main thing. He got it online to the catcher, and it was bang bang. And the, the umpire called him safe. Now they went back and checked replay. And again, you saw it from like four or five different angles that Baum's foot never actually touched home plate. And you could we could see it on replay, right? It, it, there's always, every time we see replays in sports, it seems like if, someone, if a, a ref or an umpire gets it wrong, mm -hmm. it's almost like how, because you can, we can see it, and we know you can too, how is that not relayed that you should reverse the call? That was the question here. And it became, and, and you know, we've talked about uh, the issue with the Mets the other day that you couldn't review right whenever you saw an intentional being yep. hit by a pitch. And now this, where he's ruled safe, even though from multiple angles, I saw a lot of people come out and say, man, this is ridiculous. I had the Braves on the money line. I had the Braves on the money line. What are you, am I going to get refunded? Like, those are the, the things now that you have to take into consideration with sports betting, like stuff like that. So, so stupid. And it drives me crazy because – Again, I, we said this last week. If Major League Baseball has replay, mm -hmm. and they've blown into the whole world of replay in the last few years, 
why don't they use it properly? What in the world could possibly be the reasoning here? Of course, you got people coming out. Major League Baseball still wants to get at the Braves. Like they're not done getting at the Braves this year. And then, look, I, 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 that's a bit of a stretch. I, I think that's a stretch. But that's not Oklahoma State. You, but yeah, but you're giving them a, a lot of yeah. uh, giving the conspiracy theorists a lot of ammo here because that was one of the plays where again I've seen it a billion times. He never once touched home plate, and you're telling me the guys in New York couldn't get it right. Well, blows my mind. And that's the thing is you know something that I've I've read a lot today, and and I there might be some merit to it. I, I think you might see Major League Baseball come out um, with the with the umpire association, and, and you might see some reprimands come out on this. But I could see this as saying that was such an egregiously missed call that, you know what, let's maybe he, maybe he did touch it just to graze. You know, let's not try to overturn this because that's such a bad look on the umpire. And then maybe here in a day or two we'll come out and say, yeah, he missed that and we're going to – suspend them for a game or something like I don't know something like that well that was the thing like with before replay if stuff like this happened they got the call you're like well they must have you know yeah. whatever they call we're not going to see any different uh real angle maybe other than the, some of the replays but they're not going to get a chance to see it or so whatever it's what, fine. what they need to do is they need to just have some random person setting in New York and not a, a major league baseball crew watching the games and just say hey we got a replay we're going to send you the video Tell me what you think about this call. Oh, yeah, he didn't touch on plate. Okay. Is that, are you sure about that? Yeah. I've, I've watched five different angles. He didn't touch the plate. Okay, yeah. Overturn it. He's the, out. The worst part about these last couple of calls is that they have been game changers at the Absolutely. end. Absolutely. It's one thing if it's something that goes to the first inning. It's like, that's a bad call. Like, it's really bad. You know, but we got all this time to play. We'll, we'll, we'll move past or whatever. If it's a game-defining play mm-hmm. and it's that obvious and you don't change, like, it does bring up the question, like, what is the point? What is the point of replay if you're not going to actually use it? There's been plenty of times, college football, NFL, where I've said, how in the world, after replay, did they get – and now it's becoming more of a thing in Major League Baseball, man. Mm-hmm. And it just, again, it gets magnified when the outcomes of games are involved. That's something that, look, replay cannot be screwing screwing games up, screwing finals up. You just can't. I don't care how early it is in the season. The best reaction is someone retweets it, and they're like, man, even Angel Hernandez couldn't mess this up. And Chipper Jones retweets it like, well, <laughs> yes, he could. Uh, yeah, Trust absolutely me. Could. Yes, he could. <laughs> absolutely could. So uh, we found out yesterday Hideki Matsuyama wins the uh, wins the Masters. Yeah. Uh, congrats. His caddy is now the talk of the Internet. Did you? I know where you're going. This One kid. of the uh, where he, he yeah. bows to the, you know, he bows to awesome. the uh, to the, the 18th hole. Super, super cool. Uh, someone tweeted out a photo this morning. Uh, Hideki Matsuyama was uh, was not flying uh, private after winning the Masters. He's flying commercial. Uh, it says some guy tweeted out a picture. It says Matsuyama's on my 6:45 a.m. flight to Chicago, likely to connect to Tokyo. Just hanging out by himself at Atlanta with a green jacket draped over the chair. Like, how cool is that, man? That's and and there's some other photos if you scroll through it, and it's him and his entourage. You know, he's just like he's walking through the airport. He's got the the jacket draped over his arm, and he's just texting like. How how cool is that? You win one of sports' most prestigious events. You know, you're forever a champion at, you know, one of the hardest places to win, and you're flying. Like, no one, none of his sponsors thought, you know what? He's won the Masters. He's set to fly out at 6.45 in the morning. We pay a lot of money to sponsor him. Maybe we should get him a private flight. I, I don't know. I to me that's like that's that's a blunder. It, it's cool because it brings in more of a human element, like sure. to everyone else that's like normal. You saw him win a Masters, and he's over there doing what you're doing, like flying, and uh, <laughs> he's just it's he's so casual. Like, yeah, in my green jacket, you know. It's just I, Ch- chicken or steak. Yeah, I just I just won the Masters. Meh, I'm no big deal. Here's my jacket. Let me up. hop on a Delta flight to, <laughs> to Chicago. Let me take my hardware and go home. Like, dude, it was uh, yeah. We're gonna have more of him tomorrow because there's interesting storylines out of that obviously yeah that was a cool picture of his caddy like that yeah, one like to the, so cool. to the 18th hole and he's able to to grab the victory at the masters no doubt that was a good uh, good stuff there yesterday we uh this has been the afternoon sports drive again live for furniture showcase come check them out at fifth and main here in downtown stillwater uh, open till 6 p.m today they are open to uh, 6 p.m monday through saturday and then sundays 1 to 5 p.m give them a call or a text at 338-7138 and uh, visit them online at stillwater furniture showcase.com underrated because this it's not just furniture you can get you get throw pillows 
you get bed pillows, you get paintings, rugs. Like they got your entire home furnished. Like you, you're not just going to come here and get a bed or a recliner or a dining room table. Yeah, you could decorate your entire house. You're going to get the furniture showcased. Yeah, but then you got to. That's what I said earlier. You come in, you're like, I didn't know I needed that. Now you do. Yeah, this is the place. What man. a treat. Uh, this has been the afternoon sports drive. Thanks to Levi back in the studio helping us out today and catch his show tonight. Uh, he'll be uh, breaking down much more, I'm sure, with the NFL draft and the Julian Edelman stuff and everything else in the sports world. Kyle so make sure Pitts to, to Dallas. Yeah, he's he's uh, Kyle Pitts is his guy. He's going to have more on him as well. So make sure you tune into that here tonight in Triple Play Sports Radio. That's Zach Lancaster. I'm Patrick Wheeler. We'll be back tomorrow at three o'clock. Everyone have a great evening.